In recent years, a new phrase has quietly entered the modern battlefield lexicon, the flying aircraft carrier. This term is now being used to describe one of China's most ambitious unmanned aviation projects to date, an enormous drone platform designed not merely to fly long distances, but to carry and deploy up to 100 smaller drones simultaneously. Without exaggeration, this concept introduces an entirely new layer of complexity into modern warfare, reshaping how military planners think about survivability, mass, and the future of air dominance. According to a growing number of defense reports, including coverage from Military Watch magazine, China's massive unmanned platform known as the Zhou Tian has reportedly conducted its first real flight in Shanxi province in northwest China. While official Chinese confirmation remains limited, the consistency of reporting strongly suggests the platform has moved beyond the concept stage and into operational testing. If accurate, this places China among the first nations to seriously operationalize the idea of a drone mothership capable of launching a large-scale autonomous swarm in contested airspace. Published specifications describe the Zhou Tian as having an impressive operational range of approximately 7,000 kilometers, a wingspan of around 25 meters, and a length exceeding 16 meters. These dimensions place it firmly in the category of high-altitude, long-endurance, unmanned aircraft, comparable in size to the U.S. Air Force's RQ-4 Global Hawk. However, where the Global Hawk focuses almost exclusively on intelligence and surveillance, the Zhou Tian's defining feature is its ability to act as a mobile launch platform for dozens, potentially hundreds, of smaller unmanned systems. The real significance of the Zhou Tian does not lie in its size alone, but in what it enables. The capacity to deploy 100 drones in a single mission introduces a new dimension of mass and redundancy into air operations. While 100 drones may not sound revolutionary in isolation, the context matters. This swarm could be released deep into contested airspace, overwhelming air defenses not through stealth alone, but through sheer volume and complexity. It is important to note that despite its impressive capabilities, the Zhou Tian remains far smaller than traditional U.S. Air Force cargo aircraft such as the C-130 or the C-17. These manned platforms have already conducted experimental drone launch operations, demonstrating the feasibility of deploying swarms from large aircraft. The difference is that the Chinese approach appears optimized for unmanned, autonomous operations from the start. By removing the human crew entirely, China reduces political risk, operational constraints, and concerns over pilot survivability in high-threat environments. This idea is not entirely foreign to the United States either. For years, the Pentagon publicly discussed the concept of an arsenal plane, a large aircraft capable of carrying missiles, drones, or other payloads to support stealth fighters from standoff ranges. In today's technological environment, where autonomy and remote operations are rapidly advancing, virtually any aircraft of sufficient size can theoretically be adapted for unmanned missions. China's Zhou Tian appears to be a practical realization of this philosophy. One of the most concerning aspects of such a platform is how it alters the survivability equation in modern air warfare. Drone swarms can perform a wide range of missions simultaneously. They can blanket vast areas with intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance sensors, probe enemy air defenses to identify radar emissions, jam communication networks, or even function as loitering munitions designed to explode upon impact with their targets. In this sense, the drones themselves become both sensors and weapons. Because the Zhou Tian and its drone payload can operate autonomously, it allows China to project power into extremely high-risk environments without placing any personnel in danger. Large numbers of drones launched at once could strike targets hundreds of miles away, beyond the effective reach of most ground-based fire. Such an attack could precede or accompany manned airstrikes, missile salvos, or naval operations, creating a layered and highly complex threat scenario. The issue of mass is critical here. When defenders are confronted with dozens or hundreds of small aerial targets, traditional air defense systems face severe challenges. It becomes difficult to track, identify, and prioritize targets. Some drones may be decoys, 
others may be jammers, and still others could be armed with explosives. This dramatically increases the likelihood that at least some drones will penetrate defenses and reach their targets. In a regional context, the implications are particularly serious. A drone launching mothership like the Zhou Tian could potentially conduct reconnaissance and strike missions against Taiwan, Japan, or the Philippines without ever exposing a human operator to danger. High resolution electro optical, infrared, and other sensor data could be collected at close range, feeding real time intelligence back to command centers while remaining difficult to counter. However, many critical questions remain unanswered. The effectiveness of such a system depends heavily on the sophistication of the drones themselves. Are they equipped with artificial intelligence that allows them to coordinate autonomously as a swarm? Can they dynamically adapt to changing battlefield conditions, reroute around defenses, or select targets independently? The answers to these questions will determine whether the Zhou Tian is merely an impressive technological demonstration or a truly transformative weapon system. Equally important is the nature of the payloads these drones carry. Will they integrate electronic warfare systems capable of disrupting radar and communications? Could they be equipped with kinetic warheads or even high-powered microwave weapons designed to disable electronics across wide areas? A swarm that combines sensing, jamming, and strike capabilities would be far more dangerous than one limited to a single function. In the Pacific theater, these possibilities introduce new and troubling variables. Drone swarms pose unique challenges to radar systems, missile defenses, and naval task forces. Warships at sea, in particular, could face saturation attacks by hundreds of small, explosive drones launched from beyond traditional engagement ranges. Even advanced naval air defenses may struggle to cope with the volume and unpredictability of such attacks. From a maritime perspective, the Zhou Tian could significantly extend China's ability to conduct air attacks over open ocean. While the People's Liberation Navy is rapidly modernizing, it still lacks a mature carrier air wing comparable to, in size and experience to that of the United States. Although China is now producing the carrier captable stealth J-35, numbers remain limited, and there is currently no direct equivalent to the U.S. Navy's F-35C or the Marine Corps' F-35B operating at scale. In this context, a drone-launching mothership capable of launching massive swarms could partially offset these limitations. It would allow China to project air power at sea without relying solely on traditional carrier aviation, effectively closing some of the gap with the United States in sea-launched air attack capability. As military technology continues to evolve, the concept of the flying aircraft carrier may become a defining feature of future conflicts. Whether the Zhou Tian proves to be a decisive game-changer or simply one element among many, its emergence underscores a broader shift towards autonomous, unmanned, and mass-based warfare. For strategists and defenders alike, the challenge will be adapting fast enough to counter a threat that doesn't think, react, or retreat like any aircraft that came before it. This is Mighty Military, bringing you deep analysis of the weapons and strategies shaping tomorrow's battlefields.